Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So, ever had a tool promise you the world, and when you're trying to do that specific procedure, it fails, okay? It fails utterly, all right? We've all been in that situation. I probably wouldn't have an occupation if that wasn't the case, okay? But this is what I coined as hitting a wisdom wall, and it's when that critical moment that you're facing that challenge but you lack understanding or the right strategy that will solve that particular issue. And in some cases, if you don't solve it, it can be very, very costly. So in today's presentation, I'm gonna walk you through a over the shoulder case study with one of my clients and you'll see firsthand how I was able to think on my feet and get this car started, okay? So with that, let's go ahead and jump on to this title which is the IM608 VIN writing failure on a used ECU on a 2012 Mercedes-Benz ML350, okay? If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Curtis Harden. I'm an independent all-tail diagnostic consultant. I align people with the right tool strategy and give them the one-on-one -on -one support that you see in this presentation. So if you find that beneficial, head on over to alltailtech.co.za and book the diagnostic tool consultation. Now, what you're going to be learning today is the tools used in this case study, the proper setup and connection, because we're going to be doing things on the bench, the strategy to use when VIN writing fails, and then my guide in sequential order to program the VIN and get the car started. Okay? Now, the tools used in this case study are the following. We're using the Autel IM608 Pro, the G-Box 2, your JVCI and the Maxi Sys Ultra and your used Benz engine control unit. Okay, now a little bit of background. This vehicle was tossed into shops one, two, three, and no one can get it fixed. The client received it, diagnosed it, engine control unit wasn't communicating, so he purchased a donor ECU. Then he used the IM608 to write the VIN to write the donor ECU, which he followed my video, and he wasn't able to uh, figure it out, so that's when he booked a consultation with me to see if I can give him some better luck. So, my first step was to inspect the ECUs, because sometimes people get the wrong ECUs and it, it's just a headache. So here's the original, and then here's our donor, and this is critical because you'll be surprised how much headache it will cause if you don't have the right ECUs. And just to give you guys a little bit of uh, references what to look at, this right here, the A2769000700, this is your part number, okay? The 10 slash 30 here, this is basically the software level. It's not that vital and important, okay? The uh, Q0 MED17, these are just additional identifiers that can provide insight into the ECU's functionality, okay? And then the FD11M11, okay, this is, I believe, the manufacturing date, okay? It's not crucial, but it's good to know, okay? So just make sure it matches up best as you can to prevent any headaches down the road, okay? So my next step was to connect the IM608 and diagnose the issue, okay? Now, how to connect? We're on the bench, you have your IM608 connected to your VCI, your OBD cable to your G-Box 2. We have your power and we're connected directly into the ECU, okay? Now, I have this point remoted in and from here, we are gonna select the expert selection okay so i'm just going to wait for him to do that and after we hit the expert selection we're going to go to engine ecu and then we're going to read the engine ecu just to see if we are getting communication okay it's, it's crucial to do this step first okay all right so while we're waiting for that just give it a second all right, should be almost there. Okay, so you can see here, the we are able to read, personalize is open, activated, no, okay. Now, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna click okay and I'm gonna save this information 
All right, do you want to save the engine ECU data information? I'm going to go ahead and click yes. All right, and then it's going to put it into a specific folder that we can retrieve later on. All right, file save, there's our path. Okay, so now let's go to renew the engine ECU. All right, has a G-Box been used? We are using the G-Box, we're gonna go ahead and click yes. Okay, and then we're gonna establish the communication and we're just gonna follow the prompts. All right. Let me speed this up a little bit, okay. So enter a 16 digit special key password. Okay, so the Altel picked this up. So from here, we're just gonna go ahead and click okay. Now remember guys, <clears throat> if you're out of a subscription, um, you won't be able to do functions like this because it's gonna go on their servers to calculate this password. So just make sure you have good internet connectivity and a valid subscription. All right, so after this, we're going to write the engine ECU, okay? So these are just, uh, that prop was basically some engine control units that are not compatible, okay? So here's a moment of truth. We're gonna go ahead and write the VIN. Okay, so this is the original VIN number, guys. Just keep in mind the 74 at the end, that, that's um, the, the VIN number that we want, okay? So once we put that in, I'm gonna go ahead and click enter and okay and see what result we get. All right, so this VIN does, is not support VIN writing. This unit does not support VIN writing. So at this point, I'm like, oh crap, what am I gonna do? So back to the drawing board. Okay, so a day goes by, I have another strategy, okay? This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take the original ECU or I'm sorry, the donor ECU, we're gonna put it on the vehicle, okay? We're gonna get the Maxisys Ultra, and when we ID the vehicle, instead of picking up the donor uh, VIN number, okay, which you can see here, we're gonna manually input the original VIN number, okay? And then once we do that, we're going to program it, and then after we program it, we're gonna do the teach and drive authorization, okay? Now, before you guys think that, that this is just some like magic trick, okay? I want to explain to you why this strategy will work, okay? Now you see the donor ECU has already been virginized. You can see we did that with the IM608 previously, okay? Now this means it's, it's, it's at a reset state that's ready to accept any new program, okay? Just think of it as like a blank canvas at this point, okay? Now, even though you see the VIN number from the donor ECU, all right, it doesn't mean that it's not virginized, okay? Why? Because the virginized ECU is designed to accept new software programming, all right? So think of it like a sponge at this point that's ready to accept data. Now, when I manually input the VIN and then initiate the software programming, what we're essentially doing is writing the VIN into the ECU's EEPROM memory. So once that is done and the VIN is engraved in the memory, we can do the teach and drive authorization, which will do the handshake to get the vehicle to start. Okay. The reason I want to explain to you guys that is because I don't want you to just get the Maxis's Ultra and try to do this VIN technique. It's not gonna work. It needs to be virginized first, okay? You picking up what I'm putting down? All right, cool. So let's go to the car. We have the donor ECU in the vehicle. You can see it's picking up the donor ECU's VIN number, okay? But instead of moving forward, we're gonna delete this and we're gonna go ahead and write the VIN, okay? Let me just speed that up here. Okay, so we got the VIN in there. And from here, we are going to program, okay? All right, let's do a bunch of ECU modules there. 
And what I like about the Autel, what it what it actually does now, um, it actually backs up all the data uh, beforehand. Okay. Oh, let me. I think I exited out of here. Okay, programming. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna click programming. Okay, and then uh, programming again. All right, so we have uh, terms and agreements. We're gonna click OK. All right, this is just another warning. All right, so right at this point, I believe it's backing up all the data just in case there is um, some type of configuration issue. You can always restore those files back, okay? All right, so you can see here, it's backing up all the data for us. Okay, just in case something goes wrong, we're gonna click okay. All right, so here are the tasks. We're gonna program and then it's gonna do the coding. Ensure that the network is connected, da 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 da. We're gonna click okay and we're gonna just follow the prompts, okay? So right now, it's loading. Okay, so you can see here, these are our, our three, I guess, files that are gonna be programmed, all right? The, the, it shows the current and then the target software, okay? So um, we're gonna go ahead and click yes at this stage and we're gonna let the Autel do its thing. <clears throat> All right, so clearing data. And it's gonna uh, initiate the first file. Okay, resetting control unit, clearing data. All right, let me speed this up a little bit, you guys. It's like watching grass grow. As long as you get paid. <laughs> All right, so we're clearing data. All right, let's speed this through. We've done that one. We've done this one. Okay, and now we should be getting a set of prompts. All right, getting data from server. Okay, this right here, um, this is something that you guys can do. So in the future, if you guys are programming and the car doesn't give you the result you want if it doesn't start you can always go back and select these um, different data sets okay um, they this is the success rate so this is the chance the percentage of it working okay and they're slightly different so that's just a strategy that you guys can do if you find yourself not able to successfully program and start the uh, vehicle all right all right, so we have a couple prompts and then it's going to ask us to do some things. Let me go after this countdown. Okay, so we're going to turn the ignition on. And then once we do that, we're going to click OK. So disconnect the connector from the OBD interface. Check if the engine control unit works properly. So after we did the, the programming, I recall that he tried to start the vehicle and it didn't start. Okay. So I said, okay, maybe since it's like a exchange unit, um, this process didn't do the teach and drive authorization. Okay. So I said, okay, you know what? Let's let that be our next step. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. The teach and drive authorization. All right. So if I go to special functions, we're still in the engine control unit. All right, we're gonna go to teach and drive authorization. You can see there on the top left. Okay, and we're gonna follow these prompts. Okay, so we need this thing to say yes at the bottom here. All right, so this is good news right here. This is proof that the uh, original VIN is stored in the system. If this was different, this teach and drive authorization process wouldn't work, okay? So I got excited when I saw that, all right? So now we can go ahead and uh, continue this process. We're gonna go ahead and click yes. 
All right. Do you want to personalize me again? Okay, let's go ahead and do yes. All right. And then we're going to see what it says. Start combustion engine. Okay. So he attempted to start the vehicle again, and it didn't work. It didn't work. So I've done enough of these procedures to know that there might be an underlying condition because everything is correct. It's been versionized, the VIN stored. We did the teach and drive authorization, so it had to have been something else, all right? So unveiling the hidden variables. So the next day, okay, uh, the client contacts me and said, you know, did I get an update? And then while he was, you know, talking to me, he sent me this text message. He said he replaced the battery that he was suspicious about the integrity and he adjusted the servo motor module, as I told last time, to put the transmission on park. So to give you guys some context, this vehicle, it, it, the, the gear shifter wouldn't move. So to get it into that state, he had to take some things out, which probably was a servo motor, to get it into like a neutral position. He took out some components. And while we were doing the programming, those components were still off, okay? So he put it back on, cleared the codes, and it started, it's running now, okay? I'm doing some more details about the auxiliary battery, but it's running fine, okay? So it worked, we got the car started, I hope he sold the vehicle, and uh, I was very pleased, very, very pleased. All right, so in summary, guys, always verify the East use compatibility don't assume all ECUs are interchangeable. When there's a roadblock, pivot your strategy, okay? You guys, we're, we're like in a war, okay? Stuff's going to happen. You can't cry. You got to think of a way. You got to be like MacGyver and just think on your feet, okay? If you don't have um, an option, reach out to somebody who can probably give you some advice. But they're always going to have roadblocks, okay? Um, next, always perform a teach and drive authorization when swapping ECUs. This is like the handshake that will start the vehicle. You don't need to do like an all keys lost or anything. This will be just fine when you do that procedure. And then lastly, your expertise is your currency. Don't sell yourself short. The reason why I say this is because after talking with the client, I found out that he was, his hourly rate was, he doesn't work for them. He's doing like it on a consultative basis. But I told him, I said, look, man, you're dealing with high-end vehicles, all right? You could have charged a lot of money for this procedure, more than your hourly rate, you know? But he, he's at the stage where he's just starting and stuff like that, so I understand, but um, if I had him as a client, I would get him out of there quickly and, and, and charge these people, you know? So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Comment, like, subscribe. If you have any uh, questions about the Autel tool and want me to consult you, go head on over to my website and I'll be more than happy to set you with the right information, okay? With that, you guys have a wonderful week and take care. Bye.